Nightmare on Elm Street. <clears throat> the 1984 American slasher classic. The one that started it all. When it comes to these films, this one's my favorite, but I do like 1, 2, 3, and 4. 4 is a guilty pleasure for me. New Nightmare is okay, but those are basically my favorites. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street, written and directed by Wes Craven. Rest in peace, Wes Craven. Uh, you are still the man, still the legend. Um, great horror director and writer. Um, when it comes to a villain like Freddy Krueger, very different from the others. He doesn't wear a mask. He actually talks. He's funny. He says whatever's on his mind. He likes to curse. He has an amazing laugh. Like, you know, I love Leprechaun's laugh. I love Chucky's laugh. But Freddy's got a great laugh. Played by Robert England, the legend himself. I mean, nobody can play Freddy. They already tried that. Jackie Earl, ha Earl Haley. Um, nothing against that guy. He's a great actor. But <clears throat> you cannot do it. It will not work. Robert England breathes Freddy. You understand that? He moves like Freddy. He, when he moves, he's Freddy. When he eats, he's Freddy. When he sleeps, he's Freddy. When he walks, he's Freddy. Anything he does, he created that character himself the way, you know, Wes imagined it. But Robert England is the one who portrayed the character the way he portrayed it. And so that's what we have. Um, <clears throat> but he's very unique. He, you know, his weapon of choice is the razor glove, which is odd because it's, it's a, a weapon that was made and it's not like your typical knife, which most slashers have like knives, kitchen knives, machetes, axes, uh, well, chainsaws. And, you know, this is something that Freddie made. A glove and then welded on some knives as fingers. Pretty awesome. This is God. Tina, watch this. Is my finger supposed to fall off and stuff supposed to... Don't work. But anyway, fantastic movie. Um, you got to... Really good cast in this. So like I said, Robert England as Freddy Krueger. You got John Saxon as Lieutenant Don Thompson, who plays the father of Nancy in this. And I know John Saxon from Enter the Dragon, Bruce Lee. You know, that's one of my favorite martial arts movies of all time. Um, but you got Heather Langenkamp, who plays the main girl in this. Uh, she plays Nancy Thompson. Kind of a strong female character. Uh, Johnny Depp in his film debut and probably one of the most memorable death scenes ever. Um, he plays Glenn, which is Nancy's boyfriend in this movie. Uh, Marge Thompson, played by uh, Ronnie Blakely, who's the mother. And then you got Tina, who's played by Amanda Weiss. I think I'm probably butchering these names, but Tina, in my opinion, has the best um, death scene, for sure. Um, Rod Lane, played by Nick Corey. And the teacher in this movie is played by Lynn Shay. You know Lynn Shay from the Insidious films. Um, you know, she was in Kingpin. She's in a lot of movies. But, um, yeah, that was kind of cool that, that she's in this movie. Uh, it's produced by Robert Shay. Music by Charles Bernstein. And this, this movie definitely has some memorable music. I love it. It's creepy. Especially, you know... The stuff with like the little girls um, singing, you know, one, two, Freddy's coming for you, things like that. Like, you know, down the line with the sequels and stuff, you see the girls jumping rope. And um, that's always been like a creepy thing with me. And, you know, a lot of people will say, you know, when I was younger, I was always afraid of Freddy. Like, I'd always have nightmares about Freddy. I never did. I never, I always thought Freddy was cool. The ones that I had nightmares about were, well, it was mostly Jason because that was the one that was the series I watched a lot more than this series. It, Friday Thirteenth is my favorite series, um, but yeah, I never had dreams about or nightmares about Freddy Krueger. Had a budget of like one point eight million and it made twenty five and a half million dollars. 
And Wes Craven didn't even, att um, he actually didn't even want, so to say, a sequel. When he shot this, he basically wanted it to be its own film. But uh, it was very, very successful, well received by critics. And so then started spawning the sequels. And I'm glad they made Freddy's Revenge because that's a great movie. Like, uh, I mean, honestly, that is a dark film. The second movie. Very, very dark, Freddy. Um, I, I love that one. But basically the plot of this movie is you have four teenagers who are stalked by a burnt killer with a razor glove. And, he, 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 you know, he stalks them in their dreams. So while they're sleeping, they're dreaming, he's in their dreams. And at first they're unaware of what's going on because... You know, no one really believes what's happening, but they start to realize that when you get killed in your dreams, you get killed for real, which is a really interesting concept. And the parents have a dark secret about um, the character Freddy. There, there's a, something that the parents aren't saying or don't want to say about um, Freddy Krueger himself. But the idea of this movie was where Wes Craven, he always looked up things like, like articles and things about real life people having dreams and dying in their dreams. There's actually, I think, from an L.A. Times article from the 1970s, there was a group of um, like a group of Asian refugees or something like that. Um, and they actually died in their sleep from having nightmares. And they called it, like, Asian death syndrome or something like that. There were other instances, but he was, like, really fascinated with that fact. And if you think about it, like, you know how, like, when you're dreaming and then, like, you fall off a cliff and let's say you're falling there's the ground and you usually wake up before you hit the ground. <clears throat> like, you're about to hit and you're like, ah! Well, you know, they say, like, if you actually hit the ground, you're dead. I mean, you wouldn't know anyway because I mean, you're, you're dreaming. But I'm saying, like, you know, there's that kind of concept. Like, people are having nightmares and they actually die. I mean, that would be, like, oh, my God, that'd be, there's so much trauma there. It would just it would be crazy. Um, the thing is, this is what they tried in the remake. This movie, Freddy was originally supposed to be a child molester. But Wes Craven didn't want that kind of stuff on his hands to, you know, I think I think people would lash out at him for that. And I'm surprised they didn't do all that for the remake. The remake, they did that. Uh, Freddy was more like a child molester. Um, but that's what they wanted for Freddy originally. But then they, they called him the Springwood Slasher, a, a child murderer instead. And I'm glad they did that because the whole child molesting thing, like, it just it's just... Freddy, you know, he's not like a pervert, okay? He's, he's, he's the guy who jokes around with you and, and pretty much kills you, messes with you in his dreams. Um, I mean, yeah, he, he does stuff to women, but it's not like, you know, I, I'd rather him, I think he's more scarier if he were to kill kids. I mean, that's crazy. You know, if you think about it, that's like a, a really crazy thing. Um, I think that makes him scarier, um, in my opinion. It, it makes him, yeah, I mean, you know, how could you do that to kids? But, but the name Freddy Krueger, Wes Craven came up with that because in his youth, he was bullied by a kid named Fred Krueger, which was interesting. So that's how he came up with the bully, or with the, um, with the name Freddy Krueger was because he was bullied by a kid named Freddy Krueger. And what's interesting too, the villain from Last House on the Left, the original, his name was Krug, which is short for Krueger. So uh, he used that too. That's kind of interesting. Um, the colored sweater that Freddy wears is was inspired from DC Comics Plastic Man. I guess that's where he he got the idea, but then he decided to color it red and green because something about, you know, red and, 
you know, they talk about like how color, certain colors together equals like traumatic experiences and just different things like that. He thought that red and green would actually be traumatizing in some way. Um, there were actually two Freddy gloves made. There was one called the Hero Glove, which was used in scenes to cut things. Um, and then there was the other glove, which was called the Stunt Glove, which was actually made to where, you know, people wouldn't get hurt. I mean, it probably, you know, just made of plastic or whatever, um, was there just for show. Uh, but that was kind of cool. I'm not even sure if you can get an actual... I know there's replicas out there, but I want a real one. Like, I want a real sharp Freddy glove. And I know you can get them. I know you can. Um, I used to have a pretty good one. It wasn't, like, real steel or anything like that, but um, it made noise when you would do that. This is just, of course, the cheapo one. What's also interesting about this movie is... Robert England was not the first person they were going to have as Freddy. David Warner uh, was actually scheduled to be Freddy, but he dropped the role because of scheduling conflicts. So we were going to have probably David Warner to... I mean, he did makeup tests and stuff like that, but it was just the scheduling issue. So they got Robert England. Uh, thank God. Because Robert England is Freddy Krueger. He's, he's amazing. So there are a lot of interesting things about this movie that makes it great. Um, it makes it what it is today. But I think it's so fascinating about people getting killed in their dreams and then they get killed for real. And my absolute favorite scene in this is when Tina gets... She's getting dragged around the room. You know, she's floating up in the air and stuff. She gets dragged up the wall, up on the ceiling. You know, Freddy, he he slices her down, you know, the, the stomach area and chest. And she's just like, bruh, bruh, like this. And she starts rolling all over the place. The ceiling, there's blood. There's blood everywhere. And she's yelling for her boyfriend on the ceiling upside down while Rod's down there be like, Tina, no, like this. And and there's blood everywhere, and she just falls. Because in the dream, you know, Freddy's chasing her down an alley. He finally gets to her. And, you know, she's struggling in real life, but that's actually Freddy doing it. I mean, that was an amazing scene, the way they executed it. It's, it's, it's amazing. That is my favorite death scene in... Pretty much, almost the whole series. I, I just, I love the Tina scene, and the, and the, you know when she's in the in the school and in that bag, and she gets drugged down the hall. That was amazing. Johnny Depp's death scene is iconic, but still, I don't think it's the best. Um, it's definitely, it's definitely not the best. But Freddie, you know, <clears throat> Freddie's very dark in this. He hardly says anything. Um, I mean, he laughs a lot. But when he does talk, it's really awesome. And, you know, I don't really care for the Freddy that just d does nothing but jokes around. You know, with these cheesy one-liners. And um, I just I just think it's it got to be just t a little too much. They kind of shied away from what made him scary. And like I said in part two, he definitely ups the ante in, in, in that one. But Nancy, you know, she tries to figure out a way. After some of her friends die, like, she, she starts to figure out a way to go into the dream world, grab Freddy, and bring him out into the real world. And it makes sense, because bringing him out into the real world, he can get hurt. And so that's her plan. And so she has, like, Glenn try to watch her and stuff, and she tries to pull him into the real world. And she sets up traps and and things like that. It's a really cool confrontation between her and Freddy. and makes her a strong female character. She's definitely awesome. And a lot of fans were glad when she came back for part three. That was really cool. <clears throat> but, yeah, uh, this movie... It just has an amazing story um, and amazing characters. I just, I, I love them. And the, like the soundtrack and the score and all that's great. Uh, just all together, um, one of the most iconic films 
horror films of all time, definitely. Um, <clears throat> Wes Craven really knows his stuff, man. He he really he really knew how to execute films, um, and you know, put on film what's in on his mind, um, and do it that way. He just he was so good. I love just about every one of Wes Craven's films. Just about. So, if I had to rate this movie, um, I would give Nightmare on Elm Street a 9 out of 10, for sure. Um, it's definitely not my favorite horror film of all time. Like I've stated, The Shining is my favorite horror film of all time. And I gave The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, a 10 out of 10, because that movie is a masterpiece to me. And The Shining will probably receive the same score. But Nightmare on Elm Street, just a step behind in my opinion, <clears throat> but it's still great. So anyway, guys, uh, thank you for watching my review of A Nightmare on Elm Street, 1984. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, this is day two. Um, it's going to be a long haul from here, man, because I got other reviews to do and uh, like other videos that I'm working on. So um, there's a lot to do, but there's a lot of content coming. So stay tuned. And uh, yeah, uh, this is Rob signing off.